Okay, so we are back and I'm finally wrapping up my breakdown of the entire DAZN slash Misfit Boxing. And you know I like to wrap these things up tighter than a t-shirt on Joe Weller. So, the one fighter but two fights that we hadn't covered yet was of course... KSI. He was the co-promoter of this thing. The reason it all happened, he opened the show with a bang and then closed it with a boom. Not sure why I'm speaking in comic book panels, but wham, bang, boom, zip. Wow. But yes, KSI, Misfits, DAZN, they put on an amazing card, but today's video isn't about that. It's not even about the fact that KSI won both the fights he had, but today's video specifically is about one big subject, and that is, now that we've actually seen him in the ring, after three years, has KSI gotten better? Only one way to find out, so the breakdown. Let's go. All right, so let's do this. Because KSI had two different fights, let's try to break down both fights separately and see what he did well in one, what he did well in the other, and what he could improve on in both. So let's start with the Swarms fight. KSI comes out very aggressive, like he should have against Swarms, and let's be honest here, Swarms did not belong in there with KSI, but before anyone says anything, that's not KSI's fault. He's there to fight. And what I thought he did well in this Swarms fight was he had better balance. And again, it's not Logan Paul he's standing across from, so it's not necessarily going to be as overreaching, overlunging for shots that he has to get by a big, massive frame to, to even try to land. Now, with Swarms hitting spinner Rooney's like he's Booker T in WCW, there was not necessarily a lot KSI was going to be able to do with a guy that was ever going to be able to threaten him back. But you did see more patience here. You saw him work his jab. You saw him work the body shots. That's something we're going to come back to in the Pineda fight. But there was a plan of attack to work Swarms' body and then come over the top with the absolute nuclear right hands that we all know KSI possesses. But I think that is where we saw a little bit more of that ring Russ come in positions where he would just barely overshoot the right hand where swarms would duck for cover or sprint out of the way KSI would look for the big overhand and swarms not even having a ton of experience was able to see some of those shots coming because they were a bit more telegraphed than I think JJ wanted them to be but again it's because there's no resistance offered from swarms like he's not offering anything back so JJ can load up on whatever he wants throw whatever he wants as long as it landed it was gonna hurt swarm and that isn't to say that JJ wasn't technical because I thought he was especially with the body work he was putting in the jab to the body, the right hands to the liver, to the kidney. There were some shots there that reminded you of the power KSI does have in his hands. He didn't get to land them upstairs, so I don't think people got that same shock factor that he landed when he threw it at Logan. They were there to the body, and some of those shots to the liver, shots to the kidney that he was landing on not only Swarms, but Pineda were probably the reason those guys were backpedaling faster than the people that said Slim couldn't knock anyone out outside of Dubai. And so while, yes, Swarms looked like a fish out of water, and JJ didn't necessarily have too much resistance in that fight, he still did what he needed to do which was walk the guy down, land some shots to hurt Swarms and let the people know, hey, I'm still here, I can still crack, and I'm doing things in a more balanced and technical effort and land the big shot to get Swarms out. Were there things that JJ could have done better? Yeah, and I think he knows that. Being able to step out and cut the ring off from Swarms and not let him four corner his way around that ring just to survive and maybe utilizing a bit more of that jab and lead hand to set up the big overhand right so he can hide it a bit more and it's not so transparent. I think those are things he can absolutely work on, but after three years off and with a guy that's not really offering you anything on the other side, it's expected that, yeah, you're going to get a little loose with your technique and try to get the guy out of there with a big shot here and there. And while they may miss, one will land and that's what happened. All right, so the second fight with Pineda, uh, again, I thought KSI did a really good job of establishing himself early. There was a reason and Pineda kept pointing to his side and kept pointing to his head and kept complaining to the referee. I mean, he threw more lead hands out to the referee to say, hey, he's hitting me here. Hey, he's hitting me here. Then he actually threw at KSI. But it wasn't because these were fouls. Like, JJ wasn't hitting him behind the head deliberately. No, Pineda was turning into shots and covering with shots because of the first couple that land from KSI. This is why I said, in case you forgot, KSI does have massive power. Watch the first exchange of the fight. KSI lands a jab right hand to the body. I don't think Pineda was ready for KSI to be not only as aggressive, but as strong as he was. And when he lands that first shot, to, I think it was the liver or kidney, right there on the side of his stomach, you can see Pineda's face wince up immediately. And already, that was the beginning of the end in this fight. And I'm not here to just badmouth Pineda. That's not what I'm trying to do. But for him to have that pro boxing moniker and then come in and do something like that, again, not KSI's fault at all. But he didn't do a single thing outside of playing a game of charades with the referee to stop KSI 
from trying to take his f***ing head off. And that's the best way I can describe KSI in this fight. He was looking to take Pineda's head off. And he started with the body work once again, which I really, really like. And as Teddy Atlas says, when you put water in the basement, there's bound to be a flood. And that's what I think KSI, as he moves forward, as he continues to shake off that ring rust and get to that next level, will absolutely be able to capitalize because guys will be there to actually fight him. And again, in the second fight, I think KSI could have trapped Pineda in certain instances in the corner or on the ropes when he let him escape that pressure and then reset I understand why he wanted to do that to get that clean knockout to land that one big one but moving forward when you have those advantageous positions you want to keep that person there with not only your technique but your footwork which I thought was very much improved this time around from KSI but I want to see more of that. I want to see him play with that jab to not only range fine, but push opponents into where he wants them to go. I think he could have used that lead hand a lot more, like I said earlier, the jab and the hook. And I saw him throw in person. That is devastating. That would have set up the right hand a lot better than him just loading it and throwing it off that shift in momentum and shifting his stance. And another thing, I talked about this on True Jordy's show. I think the shot selection when KSI has more variables, like his uppercuts, like his lead hook, like his straight right hand down the pipe, that will open up his big devastator the overhand right and he uses more of those shots to add variety to the mask that does cover the right hand it will land more he will be more accurate just by proxy of having more things for the opponent to read or look at before the big right hand come and all these things i'm saying weren't really going to matter on this night because ksi was clearly better than both those guys but it will matter in his next one and that leads us to the question that we came here to answer and that is is KSI better than he was three years ago? In my opinion, in very specific ways, I think yes, KSI is better than he was three years ago. And what do I mean by in specific ways? His footwork looks far better. Like I said, he isn't over lunging, over throwing, shooting right hands in almost a 12 to 6 vertical off balance, falling to his left side, or just straight up sprinting at opponents with windmill combinations like he did with Logan. His feet were separated and balanced, and he kept them that way. Moving forward or back, you didn't see crossover, you didn't see him stumbling around. It was because KSI wasn't thinking about doing those things. He wasn't thinking about, I gotta look like a boxer here, I gotta move in a certain way. It's, it's coming naturally to him now because of the hard work he's put in, so that was absolutely better. Another place I thought he got a lot better was his deliberate body work. A lot of people in this YouTube boxing scene are not taking advantage of the body, and it will absolutely pay dividends because what does KSI already do well? He has ridiculous cardio. Now he's a more balanced fighter. Now he's a bit more patient in his attack. Being able to stay around later in fights because you already have ridiculous cardio and having that power to put someone's lights out, combining that together with more variety in his shots will absolutely make him a dangerous guy for anyone because when you start with the body work, the gas tank will deplete, the hands will fall, the defense will become sloppy, and there's where the openings lie. Things I think KSI can still work on, and I think he will leading up to his next fight. Again, more variety in his shots. A little bit more defensive responsibility, which again, he didn't have to show too much, but walking into range, hands a little lower, Swarms caught him with a couple shots that, to be fair, they were not going to hurt him, but he probably shouldn't have got caught with. Just him being a little bit dismissive of Swarms, like, you can't touch me, I understand that, but... His next fight, someone's absolutely going to offer him that. So we got to be defensively responsible, even when we're having success on the front foot. And the last one will be just cutting the ring off. KSI has seen multiple times in multiple fights either what it's like to have an opponent hurt or what it's like to have them on the back foot. He had Logan on the back foot damn near their entire fight the second time around. He had both these guys running for their lives. Now the problem KSI is having is finishing those fights with clean shots. And that comes from cutting the ring off and putting your opponent where you want them to be for that finishing sequence instead of chasing them around more you chase you fall into their pace and them dictating where the action happens and how it happens even if they're losing the fight you won't get that clean finish you're looking for so that's really all i got man is ksi better absolutely he is and that's because he has rebuilt himself from the ground up as far as his boxing technique and skill so it's going to take a little bit to see exactly what that looks like in use in practicality with an opponent out there of similar skill level and that's where we get into another question who does ksi fight next i know he called out slim he called out the winner of austin mcbroom and gibb he called out tommy fury he called out andrew Tate. While I think all those are great fights as far as the marketing side and him building a massive card, and I know he wants to do it in January, I say best fight for KSI right now is either Slim or the winner of Austin and Gibb. Because again, it keeps that same experience level, influencer boxing, and it gives JJ one more fight of experience while leveling up the competition to then go after a guy like Tommy Fury or Andrew Tate, which I think, regardless of his 
banning on social media or what you think about him personally is more dangerous to KSI than anyone else that he said the name of. But you're talking about a higher level kickboxer with real skill that has put guys down, has big time power and fought at cruiserweight. I just think one more fight before you take that challenge on to give him an opponent that is going to offer some resistance and then you take that fight with a Tate or a Fury or whoever else after that. But those are my opinions. KSI is still going to do what he does and put on a show for everyone and his next one. Apparently it's in January. That's only six months months away and I hear Logan Paul might be on the card my boy Gideon might be on the card and hopefully your boy is there mic in hand to commentate on all those fights for you guys but is KSI better than he was after three years off absolutely but who's gonna be that next opponent to test and see exactly how much better he's gotten I don't have those answers January's coming soon so I guess we'll find out